Hi guys and welcome to the advanced 5x5 example solves module. Um, in this module, in each video, I'll be doing two example solves on the 5x5 using kind of more advanced techniques and I'll be going a little bit faster than I did in the intermediate module. So if you're not, you know, sufficiently um, confident, competent at 5x5, then you might get a little bit lost. So these solves are, I guess, meant for advanced solvers. Um, so let's start out by looking at this scramble to see what we can do first. And hmm, I guess I see these on the blue, and there's also some stuff on the green side. I'd probably go for the green here. Um, I can do something like this. So I've got this one, and these two, and this edge center down the bottom here. This one here, these two, and this one. So I can do something like U prime, L prime, U L, to create this two by two block and leave this one here. Then to solve this one and this one, we can do something like D R two d prime r2 like that and then to do these two in this one we can just go like that now um i guess i because i have these two and this edge here what i can do is create a three by one on the top by doing something like mu m prime and then we can do something i guess similar we can go um to to extend this to a two by three with these two we can go f M, prime, M U prime M prime like that, which preserve these three, and then I'll just insert those as normal. Then hmm, looking for my next center, I see all these yellow pieces here, so I'm just kind of inclined to go ahead with the yellow side. So we can do something like L prime U L to create those, then R prime, and then L F prime L prime to create this two by three. Then I'll rotate to put it on the bottom. Then I've got this one, this one, and this one. So we can do something like u f prime r u2 r u prime r. Then I've got these orange ones, so I can just create a two by three like that. Then my last three orange centerpieces are here, here, and here. Then I'd rotate again, and hmm, the decision for the last centers. Um, Probably what I can do is do this one and these two into that side there to create the two by three and then insert the last three centerpieces into red like so. Now looking around for my first edge, there isn't, hmm, doesn't seem like there's anything good. Um, I guess I see these orange and yellow ones here and this one. So I can rotate the cube like this because I haven't sliced the centers yet. Slice, insert, slice like that. And now some more things are starting to pop up. So I've got some options here. Um, I'll probably go with the yellow and blues. And I'm noticing that this yellow and blue one here is also attached to these uh, green and yellow ones. So I can insert that. And the other green and yellow one is here. So I can take that out, then solve these. And as I'm solving these, I'm trying to look around for what I'm going to do next. And I notice that these white and blue ones came over here and the other white and blue edge piece isn't in the top or middle layer, so I'll need to flip over, and it's actually over here. So I can do something like F U prime F prime. The finger tricks for that are quite nice. Just just F U prime F prime, like that. And then I'll solve this one. And when I was doing that, I noticed this white and red, and the white and red piece isn't here either. So I'll need to flip over again, and then the last white and red piece is here. So I can solve that. And instead of trying to be too fancy and complicated, what I'll do is just insert the last one to create four edges here, flip over, and then start looking at what to do next. And the only uh, semi-pair is these two. So what I would probably do is rotate, slice. Now I've got these two, I can flip, slice back. Then I've got the red and the yellow, which are easy. Or if I can if I can do the bottom three rotation like that, that's a little bit nicer. Then I'll probably go for the white and orange. So I can insert this one there, slice, flip both of these pieces, solve it, replace it, and finish off my centers. Now after I've done that, um, I have these two here and this one here. So what I can do is something like U2, slice, flip, slice back. And now I'm noticing that I have literally, yeah, I have no midges attached to their wings on these last three. So what I can do is do M prime U2 
And before I slice back, I notice I've got this block and this one here. So I can slice this one back then flip this and then slice back to complete that. Now I've got my last two edges case. Um, it's just, we've got a flip midge on both edge pairs. And then I'll go ahead and do my three by three stage. Um, I'll probably go for yellow in this case. I've already got, I already see some yellows here and I've already got this one here. And in this situation where I can, where I've got a corner solved like this, I'll actually try and find the other corner, the, the, the corresponding edge piece so that I can insert it and make an extended cross using keyhole. Now I've got this pair. Um, I guess I could go for this pair and then this pair and I've got winter variation and then an R permutation. Okay, on this scramble, I initially notice a couple of things. I notice I've got the one by three on yellow, and I also notice I've got a few two by one blocks on white. And I think, well, the two by three on white is actually easier to create than a two by three on yellow. It's just going to be three moves. So we can do something like um, R prime, U prime, R2 with the R's as wide moves. And then I know that my last three white centerpieces will end up there, there, and up there. So I can do R prime, U prime, R2. Then to pair up these two and this one, we can go, we can do something like R, U, L prime, U prime, like that. And then as I'm inserting this last kind of, uh, this last one by three bar here, I'll probably just rotate like that and then work on my second center. And I notice I've got this case where, where I've got an edge and a corner. So I can extend that to a two by two. Then I've got this corner and this edge. I can extend that to a two by three. And then the last three yellow centerpieces are here, here, and here. So luckily I didn't need to look over the back here. So I don't need to rotate either. So I can do an F, slice, and insert. Then I'll rotate like this. And hmm, I'm probably, probably inclined to go for the blue here because there doesn't seem to be very much that's easy to solve at all. So I can solve these three into the blue layer. Then I'll rotate like this probably, solve this one and then solve this one. And I'll take out this corner, corner center as I'm doing it. So now I can pair up these last three blue ones like that, and then insert them down to the bottom. Now my two by three on orange is gonna be pretty easy and really easy to finger trick. So I can do these two and then these two. So I can go F, R, U prime, R prime, F, R, U prime, R prime, F, flip to the bottom, Pair out my last three orange and then insert those. Now here I've got a two by two block, a two by one and a one by three. So this is gonna be a really easy last two centers. So I can do something like U prime, F prime, R prime, F prime, R2, U2, R prime, like so. And then it's time to start pairing up our edges. Now I've got these two, these two wings attached to one another, the orange and green, and the orange and green wing, uh, orange and green midge is here. So I can do U, L, slice, and then I'll probably go for the white and blue, I suppose, because I have the three pieces easily visible. There, insert this one into the back and then slice like so. Now I notice I've got these two and this one. So the red and blues. So slice, uh, insert, slice, flip, slice back. And then I've got these two orange and blues and the last orange and blue one is here. So, we can do something like F R prime F prime R, slice there, R prime U R, slice again. And then what I did notice was these green, this green and yellow one came back here. So I can do something like rotate R prime U prime R. And then as I'm doing a Z2 rotation, I'll do a wide U2 to solve these two together and also be looking around the top layer for the last um, green and yellow one, which is over here. So then I can do something like F U prime F prime slice. And then I notice I've got this block, um, the red and green block and the red and green pieces back here. So I can go R U R prime D2 like that. And then I notice I've got this tredge here, which is flipped. So um, I guess because even though it's a little bit inefficient, 
um, it's probably easier for look ahead to just take this one out randomly and then go ahead and start solving this trench by slicing, flipping and slicing back. And whilst I'm doing that, I'm looking for the last edge that I'm going to solve, which is going to be um, yellow and orange in this case, because I have these two and this one here. And then take it out and resolve my centers. Now, the first thing that I, I see this case where I have these two and this one here, but that's not great. I also see I have these two and this one, so the red and yellows, so I can just do a slice flip. And then instead of slicing back with a D prime to put it into this position, I can do a three wide U prime like that. And then for this case, I have the white and oranges and this white and orange one here, which is pretty easy. I'll just slice like that, flip and slice back so that I don't have to rotate. And then I've got my last two edge case here, which is a simple no parity case. So it's just R2, F2, U2, R2, U2, F2, R2, like that. And then I'll go on and solve three by three stage. I see I've got these two already in the yellow layer. So I'm inclined to use this yellow piece, put it there, chuck it on the bottom, and then continue my solve. Now I've got these two, then this corner and this edge back here then probably solve these two into that slot. And then this one, winter variation and a G permutation. And we're solved.